Thank you very much. And now Paola and Francesca, please uh, take over. Okay, thank okay. you. Welcome to our lightning talk. We are Francesca Concha and Paola Curti. <laughs> from METI, the Politecnico di Milano. Uh, Politecnico di Milano, yes. And the experience we are sharing today is uh, tells the story of the shift of two MOOCs from different uh, uh, CC licenses associated to single videos to being completely CC BY in one case, and from all rights reserved to CC licensed in the other. So the common elements in both cases, um, instructional designers, you see them in red in the presentation, were committed to advocate around opening them. And uh, both MOOCs involved a large team of content experts from different institutions, and you see them in white. So let's start with the first MOOC, Higher Education for Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, this one was designed involving a team of uh, 31 professors and experts coming from two universities. So it was a choral, multidisciplinary and challenging work, given its nature. Just imagine more than 30 professors and content experts from two different universities, which were Politecnico di Milano and the Università degli Studi di Bologna, working often for their first time for a shared MOOC. So since the beginning of the design phase, we started proposing CC license as, as a possibility in consistency mainly with the SDG4, Quality Education for All, which was one of the contents of the MOOC itself. Most professors didn't really know about open license actually, so we explained to each content expert, one by one, uh, when they were available, what a CC license would mean for them, for their work, and for the audience at large. And these storyboards were a work in progress. Then the implementation phase arrived. So video recordings and post-production with graphic elements chosen within the boundaries uh, set by the licenses choice of each video. And this was the moment in which each professor after their recordings should sign the document with their choice around the CC license. And things went crazy. <laughs> I'll think about it later. Please tell me what to choose. Please don't make me choose, you do it. And so the implementation phase, uh, which should have lasted just a few months, went on for more than a year. Many people, many reasons, as one can easily imagine. And if you ever work with the professors or if you are a professor, you know that things can get crazy with timing, but that was actually our best chance to advocate further and further around the open li opening licenses as far as possible. And the perseverance and commitment were the, the key elements in this process. And that's what happened actually. One telephone call at a time, one email at a time, one professor at a time, one license at a time, and the whole MOOC was finally published with all contents with CC BY license. The second experience we are sharing refers to the MOOC Essential Radiochemistry for Society, which promotes promote the awareness about the usefulness of nuclear and radiochemistry and aims at mitigating the, the special uh, skill skill-based deficits within nuclear chemistry at master and doctorate levels. It is one of the outputs of a CINCH project network started, started in 2010 and uh, involving 14 partners from 11 European countries, including universities, research institutions, and partners from industry. The MOOC production process took more than a year. Never during this period any partner thought about the possibility of releasing contents with an open license. Guarantee of openness already appeared to be the fact that it was always online. The occasion to introduce a common reflection about OER was the collaborative writing of a new proposal for a new project to be submitted for European funding, which set precise conditions. New methods and tools based on most 
recent pedagogical knowledge. And rather than developing new programs on, or courses to adapt the existing ones. Leveraging on those concepts, partners have been proposed to design a model aimed at spreading the created knowledge, releasing and sharing teaching and learning material, materials as open educational resources and practices. The idea for the new project is first to start from an analysis of the existing resources to look at the integrity of the material provided so far, as well as their accessibility for the users. Then to list them according to criteria and metadata, and finally to design a model to release them as OER. Sharing knowledge on uh, nuclear radiochemistry will contribute in stimulating the best educational use of the internet's potential. So let's go with the takeaways of this experience, why we are sharing it, because we believe that it could be uh, useful for someone else who is working with MOOC design and want to release them with open licenses. Let's start with the first. The specific contents offered in the two MOOCs gave uh, instructional designers hints about how to deal with objections, doubts, reticences and oppositions by content experts. So take into consideration that also the content in itself might offer you a chance to advocate for open. Secondly, each person involved counts, content experts, methodology experts and technicians. In both MOOCs, we met many people to be convinced about going open, but on the other side, when the wave started, no one wanted to stop it. Of course, it's not an easy, as easy as saying it, but it was a fact. Then be a reliable advocate. You can build upon proposals if you are liable when asked specific questions about licenses. And then pay attention to each step of the MOOC design and implementation process because they can offer you the most effective insight about when to propose open licensing and be ready to listen all the time. Then don't forget the value of patience and respect for the expert's perspective. If you wait and persevere, it might work. And finally, every cloud has a silver lining. A prolonged time frame might become an opportunity. We didn't perceive it as, as a, an opportunity at the beginning, as anyone involved in MOOC design can easily imagine. But then anyway, it's better to start as soon as possible when the project begins with talking about open licensing too. So thank you and we, we finished. And uh, thank you also for Chiara Di Terlizzi who is the graphic designer who supported us in designing this presentation. And uh, if anyone has questions, please go ahead. Thank you very much uh, to both of you. You still have two minutes left, so that's quite impressive. There was a question from Bea uh, who was asking like, if you had to do something differently, like would, what would that be, right? So if you had to start again, what would you, what would you do differently? Okay, thank you for this question. Well, actually, uh, the, as you easily can imagine, Bea, the, the main problem was that uh, the time was hugely delayed uh, from the initial plan. And this was not in our control. So what we would do, what we, what we would do next time in uh, the case of the MOOC around SDGs would be to organize a meeting with all professors at least once before the, the MOOC begins in order to advocate around open precisely uh, once and for all, because it took us a huge amount of time actually to contact them one by one later on. But uh, I am not really sure that this would have worked because uh, actually one of the key uh, experiences, uh, one of the key takeaways from this experience was actually that uh, after a while, after uh, spending a lot of time talking around the open licensing, when we met them one by one, offering a coffee or something before and after the recordings, that's what actually worked, okay? And uh, then they asked a lot of questions, but uh, what worked was uh, accompanying them with the, the specific part of the work that was anyway required from us. So being good at developing MOOCs, okay? 
And then that's what uh, uh, made us being reliable also on licensing, I would say. I don't know about Francesca, but... Uh, sure, the, 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 same, the same experience, really. And uh, you have another question, Bea. Uh, would you decide on a license as a starting point? Uh, actually, we started with uh, CC by NC initially. Um, because some of them were worried about uh, commercial reuse of their uh, um, resources. Um, some of them were also oriented around ND, <laughs> and which actually we tried not to uh, encourage since the very beginning. Uh, I don't know, it depends on the contents. In my case, uh, the MOOC was around SDGs, so it was perfectly consistent with the content of the MOOC to go for uh, the widest license possible, okay? In the case of Francesca, the story is very different, so I leave the floor to Francesca for an answer. Yes, if uh, I have time. We're out of time. <laughs> I think that I write the answer, okay? <laughs> Thank you for all of these questions and these and this lovely answers. Congratulations, first of all, congratulations on, on all of on your hard work to, to make MOOCs really truly open, as you mentioned. And I think that these questions also come from there because of the, the role that she is involved in at TU Delft, uh, I think, there. You can correct me if I'm wrong. But please continue engaging with this. Yes, uh, so you can continue engaging on oh, yes. OEG Connect directly. And, Thank you. Uh, and uh, yes, if you are, if you haven't been looking at the impact of this truly open MOOCs yet, then I think that you should consult uh, with Leanne about her framework for that kind of activity. <laughs> Just making a little connection here. So thank you.